When I first unboxed the G-Shock Rangeman, the GPRH-1000, I was surprised by how soft it was. Okay, this, this band is supple. It's very soft. And then the body of the watch has this soft coating. It's like, you know, it, I thought it was hard plastic covered with soft plastic, but the more I wore it, I, re I realized that this is all soft plastic on the bezel. It's not as soft as the band, but I mean, the, actually the first thing I thought of was that I used to have this uh, short rave radio by Grundig that had, had like a soft covering over a hard plastic, but there's no hard plastic in this bezel. This is soft and I, I didn't know why. And I was confused a lot of times on a G-Shock watch, there may be some design feature that you don't know why and and there's a reason and you find out the reason eventually for example on the mud man uh the mad watch collector was was calling these bumps futuristic barnacles and you know he didn't know why they had these bumps he assumed that they were for style reasons and that's not true the reason why you have raised and lowered portions is because the raised portions of the bezel protect the screen they're higher than the screen, so an incidental bump would hit the raised portions before it hits the screen. And the lowered portions of the be bezel are out, allow drainage, okay? So I look at the King. The King, the, the uh, GXW56BB, doesn't have those lowered portions. When I was wearing this, I was getting a lot of residue building up on the screen, okay? So there's a reason for the design features. And I mean, I remember even back in the 90s, my best buddy Nick got a, uh, you know, one of the, I think it was a, either a 6600 or a 6900. And to me, it looked like a hockey puck or a flying saucer, you know, because of, of the, the bevel on the side. You know, it was the size of a hockey puck. It looked like a hockey puck, except like with flying saucer sensibilities. Well, that, that flying saucer shape to the edge allows the sleeve to go up and over the watch. So when you look at the the king, it's like a like a wall. It's hard for the sleeve to go over the king. So on the Range Man, the uh, the new Range Man, the Range Man Gen 3 is what they're calling it, the GPRH 1000. It's just about the same size as the king, but it wears much better because it, the sleeve can go up and over the, the body of the watch. But anyways, we're talking about its softness, okay? This is soft plastic, and I didn't know why it was like that. I, I, I was curious, and G-Shock en Espanol had a post on YouTube, on his community post, where he linked an article that was from G-Shock's international website. And let me, let me pull it up and read it. It says, G Rangeman, GPRH1000. Tools to survive. Casio released the new Rangeman GPRH1000 in January 2024, following the Mudman GW9500 and Mudmaster GWG B1000. Casio, for the first time in six years since the release of the GPR B1000, Casio has introduced a new product in the Rangeman line. With the release of the Rangeman GPRH1000, the transition of the major Master of G Land series to a new generation with updated exteriors and features is complete. Introduced in 2013, Casio designed the Rangeman line to be worn by rangers providing disaster relief and mountain rescue services while working in extreme conditions, from wading through swamps to scaling steep mountains. In addition to being mudproof and water resistant, the Rangeman is also the first G-Shock watch to incorporate a triple sensor that can measure direction, barometric pressure, altitude, and temperature. The original Rangeman is the tool watch that truly embodies ultimate toughness for survival. The original Rangeman was followed by a second generation, GP. RB1000 released in 2018. A groundbreaking watch, the Rangeman GPRB1000 included the world's first solar assisted GPS navigation function, enabling standalone navigation. Even though it was a groundbreaking model, 
Rangers and rescue workers let Casio know they needed a larger dial. High visibility is the top priority for Rangers, who must make quick decisions with lives on the line. Casio listened and made the display of, on the new GPR H1000 as large as possible, making it easy to check both your surroundings and your vitals, even in hectic situations. Additionally, the new watch is equipped with an improved memory and pixel, LCD, that is highly legible and does not cast shadows, even under direct sunlight. The use of resin in the new Rangeman GPR H1000 is more prominent than in the Mudman and Mudmaster lines. Based on further feedback from Rangers that their watches should not damage the in vehicle equipment and rescue targets used during missions. Urethane outer bezel covers the reinforced resin center case. The mud resistant button guard at 9 o'clock is forged and molded, and the sensor at 3 o'clock is solidly guarded by a metal part manufactured using metal injection molding technology. The sensor cover on the 3 o'clock side is designed with a slit in the front side, ensuring that even if muddy water gets in, it can be drained out. The watch case is further streamlined with the sensor inside the case, preventing it from injuring the hand of the wearer. The core element of the range man is the mud resist button, designed with adverse field conditions in mind. A cylinder shaped stainless steel cover project, protects the button and the button shaft has a gasket preventing mud and dust from penetrating the mechanism. Using carbon fiber reinforced resin for the case back ensures that the watch stays light and water resistant to 20 atmospheres. These features combined with an overall toughness make it a G-Shock indispensable for rangers who often need to crawl through mud or get caught in raging waves. Incidentally, the previous GPR B1000 was an extremely high spec model incorporating all the technologies of the time into a single watch, including a wireless charging system, a ceramic back, and standalone navigation functions. However, one of the themes of this new model is slimming down the watch by eliminating functions. One way to slim down the watch is utilizing Bluetooth linkage with a smartphone. While relying on the watch's LCD in environments where it is impossible to pull out a smartphone such as altitude, route, and life log are transmitted to a phone app you can check after the mission is completed. In addition, a new optical sensor was installed on the case back for heart rate data such as blood oxygen level. The Bobcat character, a familiar icon of the range man since its birth in 2013, has been moved from the bezel to the strap, where it is silhouette where its silhouette reminds fans that this new watch is still a range man. The GPR H1000's rugged construction makes it immediately recognizable as a G-Shock. The shape of the GPR H1000 was derived from the needs of rangers and rescue workers who operate in extreme conditions, truly making it a master of G. The latest watch is an uncompromising professional tool providing the specific specifications required in a field where human lives are at stake. In everyday life, you may never find yourself in a dusty or sandy situation where you're constantly checking your vitals. However, the more you take it out for workouts or leisure time, the more you'll realize its promise as a piece of gear that puts its wearer first. And then there's a picture of a guy wearing a black trench coat and the yellow range man. All right, guys. So, the... the <laughs> I'm glad that that I found that that article from G-Shock in Espanol. That that wasn't on the American website. I didn't see it at least. This was on the international G-Shock website. But it answers the first question answers is why is the range man soft? It's soft because the wearers, you know, who are these uh Japanese rangers who are rescuing people don't want a watch that when it bumps, you know, equipment in the helicopter or uh, you know, what uh, equipment in their in their dune buggies or whatever you don't they don't want it to damage any equipment you know you think of medical equipment and that is something I thought of uh, you know when wearing the Mudman and I think that I've mentioned it a few times in my videos that when you look at uh, this this uh, bezel like this part is hard resin but these set screws which hold the bezel in are prominent. So it does hit stuff. 
And I'm pretty sure I talked about it in the, in the last video, but, but I was actually going, going to make a bigger deal about it in its own video that these screws scratch things because they stand proud from the chamfer on the bezel. Now you look at mine, mine are worn down, meaning whatever it's been, been hitting has been receiving damage, which is oil field equipment which isn't as important as, you know, life-saving medical equipment that, that these Japanese rangers would be around. But still, it's, I'm, I'm banging stuff up wearing the Mudman. And the Mudman's extremely tough. It's amazing. I love this Mudman. Now, the Range Man, you look at, at the, uh, the bezel. The bezel has no set screws on the front. So whatever it bumps, is it's not going to damage, right? And on top of that, this is confirmed to be urethane all the way through and I can peel it off, peel it off the screen a little bit for you to see the flex may be tough to see with my finger in the way. I'll use the Leatherman bolster, which I guess this attachment isn't, isn't thin enough. What other attachments do we have on this one? Let's see. Maybe I'll just use the, uh, the good old pliers. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that works. See how much, it, how soft it is. You can see it pull away. Anyways, now, the, we know that the, the bezel is urethane and soft and protects equipment and protects, protects people who are being rescued by these Japanese rangers. But I would point out that this metal keeper does scratch up things on the other side of the wrist. And so it's, it's kind of inconsistent that the front would be soft and the keeper would be metal when on the, the mud man, the front has these metal protrusions, but a soft keeper. And the other thing that that uh, that article clears up is what range or ranger is is the range man for? I thought it was for military rangers, you know, like the Army Rangers. Or I live in Texas now. They had the Texas Rangers, who were you know a militia essentially, and uh, and so I thought that the range man, the original range man, was for a gun range. You know, so I was confused why they'd have a yellow watch and call it a, a range man. And I made a whole video about that. And people, some people were ridiculing me saying that, you know, survival watch is supposed to be high visibility. Well, I guess we have a different uh, definition of what, sur what you're trying to survive from. All right. But anyways, there's, there's a reason behind these designs. This is soft for a reason. Okay. And anyways, my... Uh, camera is about to die. So I just want to get this in before it dies. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. And let me just tell you guys that coming up, I'm going to I'm gonna unbox this Len Lezer W7R work light. I'm pretty excited about this one. And a Tecto automatic knife from Maine. All right? So stay tuned for that one. And... We got all these other watches too, where we're going to compare them and test them. Stay tuned. You're gonna want to see it. And we still have the the uh, official review coming up of the Range Man, which I like. And by the way, P Parmar loves this watch. He's been going to the comments to to defend this watch's honor. We'll go through his comments. He likes it. And I'm Jim Kincaid. Thanks for watching.